I always thought it was uh, extremely fitting and appropriate that, that uh, Bob Belden's birthday was on Halloween, October 31st, because he was undoubtedly the, mo the, the scariest person uh, I've ever met. And I mean scary in the most complimentary way. Uh, he was awesome. Uh, it was incredibly hard to believe that one person could know so much about so many things and accomplish so many things. Uh, it was just incredible. He was like a, an apparition, a cosmic force that joined this world of people for, uh, uh, unfortunately, a, a short time. I remember hearing him play the tenor saxophone the first time at the Vanguard, subbing with uh, Mel Lewis's band on a Monday night. <clears throat> and I'd never heard anything like that, you know. And I go back now and I watch uh, videos of Woody Herman on YouTube with, uh, with Bob Solos. And, uh, you know, he, he was playing, uh, even back in the late 70s, he was playing things that no one had ever heard before. And uh, he had this incredible talent to take a little gem of an idea that occurred to him while just walking on the Upper West Side and uh, talk about it, think about it, uh, try to talk somebody into doing it. And six months later, a year later, we're all holding a CD of incredible music that came from that, that kernel of an idea. Um, and many things have been said about what Bob did artistically, but you know, he understood what uh, the purpose of art is in society. And so the, the, the saxophone playing, the composing, the producing, the conceiving, everything, those were just venues for the greater good of uh, producing emotional, deep emotional statements uh, in all of the different forms in which he worked. He was an incredibly generous person and uh, you know, he was always giving CDs and DVDs of material that he had that no one else had. Uh, bootlegs, outtakes, uh, books, loaning books, scores. Uh, he was incredibly generous with his time, just sitting down and talking to students. Uh, uh, I sat many times in his, his apartment on, on West uh, 87th Street and, and listened to him talk lengthy conversations and I, of course I was only hearing one side of those conversations to people that he didn't know just strangers that called him that had a question about a Miles recording or uh, uh, something that, that, that Freddie Hubbard said in a session or you know and Bob was more than happy to talk to uh, to anyone and everyone and you know it's funny you, you even extended that generosity to my uh, to my kids he used to, when I had young kids he used to send me a weekly envelope of coupons that he clipped out of the newspaper um, for diapers and uh, you know, rice flakes, baby formula, you know, every, anything that would that have to do with, with the parents having small kids, the weekly envelope of coupons uh, arrived and, and I used those coupons. <laughs> you know, I can just see him sitting there amid all the CDs and the LPs, uh, the books at his desk, sitting there with the Sunday paper cutting out diaper coupons. But, you know, that was Bob. You know, in all of my, uh, musical endeavors, uh, you know, uh, producing, writing for big bands and orchestras, uh, putting together uh, my own bands and, and choosing material and how these tunes are going to be played. I always think about what Bob would do in the situation that I'm in. And the answer uh, to that question is always the right answer. And so everything I do, he's uh, influenced. Uh, and you know, has always influenced, and he'll, he'll always be there, you know, in every note.